We, the people of Richmond, Virginia, have a fascinating story to tell, and I believe that we can inspire generations by the things that have been left out of our historical record. I'm Priya Femi, and this is what I was born to do. My daughter is actually born to do this as well. When she was born, our elders said, teach her everything you know, don't let her move, make sure she's right there, front and center with you, so that she can be inspired in the same way that you want to inspire others. Start at home. Make sure you don't do this as an external thing. Work from the inside. Work with your family first. And so that's why you'll notice that behind us, we had a picture of our ancestors along this ancestor altar that I created. I'd been doing this for a long time anyway, but I hadn't really thought of how it could actually inspire those in my beloved city, our beloved city, RVA, until I sat down with some elders and they said, you know, you come from a long line in Nigeria of those who actually held on to these ancestral stories and elevated this. This was something that was going on in your bloodline free long before they were ever enslaved. I am the daughter of a field Negro. My grandfather and my great grandfather picked cotton here. We were enslaved and probably sold on the auction blocks in Richmond, Virginia. So it's not like I actually had a connection to the continent that I could actually say I can speak in these languages and that I understand the foods. This was a reclaimed effort. This was something that I went into the past to pull into the future so that I could presently be as strong as possible. And Egun Femi means my ancestors love me. And when I found out that, I was like, well, I got it honest. I might as well move forward. But I didn't really know how I could make that be something that was going to benefit my family and something that I could devote my life to as life's work, where you could actually make a living at it. So I started by doing what I did for my ancestors, but I made sure that it was in the context of the ancestors of Richmond. So I put together these frames and they had pictures of these people from Richmond, Virginia that had these narratives that I felt everybody should know about, but no one did. I mean, we're sitting on the midst of this incredible community legacy, this ancestor story, where people did these things that, like I said, can inspire generations from Richmond, Virginia, but like I couldn't figure out why are they left out of the books? Like, why did I not hear anything about these people, these stories uh, long ago? And I even went to school here, and my friends didn't know about it, and my, my elders didn't know about it. No one here in Richmond seemed to know about these folks. So I said, all right, boom, let me talk to my friends. And they started really coming to me over and over, like free, every time we're getting ready to go out and hang out, you're in there reading books, like what's the deal? Um, you can't like do this halfway. You really need to do this, but do it for your life's work. And so that's the dream team. I can remember when there was this uh, startup competition here in the city and you had to submit your idea and I was chosen to do so. And then with a democratic election of my peers, they decided that Untold RVA should become a thing. Untold RVA is actually the people's choice for the creative advancement of the missing pieces within Richmond's historical record that are hidden in plain sight. And I believe that if we can actually get strength from those stories, we can actually be just like the ancestors whose shoulders we stand on, we'll be those for tomorrow, for those of tomorrow. Those three colors that you see oftentimes behind slides when I present or any time that I'm going to put any kind of typographical content out, there's three colors. It's red, black, and green. I represent everything based on the red, black, and green. Red being the bloodline of my ancestors, being from the past. The black is representing who I am today as a black woman who's self-determined and representing black excellence. And the green is there for the future, for the fertility of the youth that will actually be in our spot tomorrow. And so when I began to start actually applying this whole ancestor concept to the stories of Richmond that had been left out of the historical record, and if you notice, I always have my cards on me now because I'm always ready. I'm always ready to give out information about what I'm doing and how other people can be inspired. There's a little piece off the corner which represents the missing pieces of the historical narrative. There's backstories in everything if you just look for them. And that's where the magic is. So I began setting up these ancestor altars 
And I actually started giving tours all over the city to these places that were, aren't, weren't even marked, where these things happened where people could come there and I could see them actually being transformed by standing on the spot. It was incredible. And so if the stages got bigger, people started calling me to go all over the country. Like right now today, I've got places lined up to go to carry and brag on Richmond, Virginia as much as I can in all these other states. And people are like, wow, I got to come to Richmond. And it makes me so happy to actually brag on us and share our stories to those who really wouldn't have ever even heard what we were doing. But there are huge, huge opportunities to be able to give back to the world from the things that we're all accomplishing right now today. This is actually at the base of the uh, Lee Monument. And it was thousands of people to hear me be able to talk about these things that I wanted to make sure that would never be forgotten again. One, my ancestors love me. Two, they are our first line of defense. And three, they did good and I will do good too. To repeat that at 11:11, which is a time of the day where your dreams seem to be able to get the most velocity. And I was telling people this and I could see it clicking even though it wasn't something from their particular practice, but it was something they could relate to and I knew I was on the right track. So then, being the fact that I'm surrounded by this creative community and all these people in Richmond, Virginia that are also doing what they were born to do, one day I ran upon this quote from Charles Corral, who was one of the founders of Public Broadcasting System. And he said, I have become faintly aware that there is in this state and in this nation and in this world an association of men and women who, while they may not even know each other, might still be called a conspiracy of good people. We are a conspiracy of good people. We all came today to be inspired by these ideas and carry them forward as seeds to plant so the future will be able to stand on our shoulders because we remembered these stories from the past. One time I had a friend, it was not too long ago, um, his name is Ryan, and he was getting ready to set up this center of innovation in the north side in Highland Park. And he said to me, Free, we believe that presence is power and we want you to be present in Highland Park so that the youth will understand how to move forward on their dreams. We want you to become the social innovator in residence at our new center. To great acclaim, the center opened, and I was able to establish storefront studio in the back of their um, warehouse, which is about 7,000 square feet. And inside of that, I'm able to think and dream of all these things that are related to our history and creative ways of how I can get it out and share it with the people. And then the conspiracy of good people grew and people began to start coming. Even in 2017, when we opened our center, it seems like every week someone is saying, please, can I bring my students from the university? Please, can you come and speak to us on this stage? Can you get on this plane? Can you tell us what you're accomplishing? What are you and your friends doing in the city of Richmond that we can use where we live to change our world the way that you've changed your world in your city of RVA? And so I realized at that point, I am like legit, even though I didn't graduate college, I am a social innovator. There's no confusing it. And I wanted to make sure that anybody in this room that has a dream or an idea understands that it can actually be your life's work. And you can find a way to commodify, commodify and monetize that so that you can actually derive a living at doing what you were born to do. I believe that self-determined social innovators on the front line are naturally leaders who, despite surviving a range of cultural traumas, still commit ourselves to the work of dismantling the systemic inequities, threatening authentic social progress. So now we're going to play the Untold RVA Five Things Social Innovators Edition. Are you all ready to play? Yeah. Okay, boom, let's do this. Here's the rules. You got to hear five things. First of all, who's ever heard of two truths and one lie? Okay, this is what we're going to do. You're going to hear five things. One of them is bogus and then you raise your hand to figure it out, okay? First one, John Mitchell Jr. John Mitchell Jr., as you can see him, these are the five things of him. Decide which one is untrue. Richmond Public Schools fired him for being too RBG. Raise your hand if you think that was untrue. His newspaper logo was a black fist. Raise your hand if you think that was untrue. He became the editor at 21. He was extremely rich and that he trolled lynchers mercilessly. 
He was also the founder of the Richmond Planet newspaper. So all of you that raised your hands to anything else except for the fact that he was extremely rich, he was not extremely rich. Everything else is true. Please look up John Mitchell Jr. Make sure that you are inspired by him, especially if you have any interest in blogging, publishing, or telling narratives from your own pen, on your own computer, on your own laptop. The second one is Mary Wingfield Scott. Mary Wingfield Scott, I love her because if it wasn't for her achievements and going against the grain, real talk, we would not even have the Richmond that we have today. She preserved the majority of the buildings that were going to be destroyed here in the city by herself. Um, here's five quotes of hers. Raise your hand which one you think she didn't say. That airplane, okay, so this one was about the war memorial. Um, you guys know it's going on Belvedere, that big, building right by Browns Island, you can overlook and see. All right, she said, that airplane hanger with the lady inside breaking her neck, Psh, okay. Do you think she said that about the, about the airplane hanger? Raise your hand if you think that that was untrue, that she said that, okay. The second one, I don't work for anyone. Do you think she said that? They'll write on my tombstone, died of errands. Do you think she said that? <laughs> okay, the fourth one, people with no taste are the majority. Do you think she said that? And then the fifth one is Edgar Allan Poe was a total loser. Do you think she said that? You don't think that's true? She didn't say that. Good job. Awesome. Okay. And then the third one is Lorna Pinckney. That's my dear sister. She ran Verses, which is a poetry spot, and she passed away here recently. She's the embodiment of black excellence. Do you believe that she grew up with Biggie Smalls? Do you think that's not true? Do you think that she wore Chuck Taylors daily? Do you think that was not true? Verses? her poetry um, organization being in Little Africa. Do you think that was not true? How about that she was holding verses even in the hurricanes? Do you think that was not true? Or her favorite word was fresh. Do you think that was not true? Those of you who just picked fresh know her best and favorite word was dope. So you got that one right. <laughs> and then the last one I want to share with you are five things that I actually want you to remember when I'm gone so that you can tell people about what Free Egun Femi taught you at TEDx. Okay, you ready? These are what I call my field notes from the front line. Number one, always be self-determined. Look at this as the things that you can do to carry on what you were born to do regardless of what anyone else says, regardless of whether or not you have the credential or the paper to prove that, oh, you deserve to do what you were born to do. As long as you know it inside, do it, baby. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Number two, resistance. These are the things that you actually can accomplish and the things that are in front of you to stop you. You must resist them. These things are set inside to make sure that you can't accomplish, but you know, obviously, you can because you're self-determined. The third one is intersectionality. This speaks to who you can work with that's not normally part of your everyday. Find the people who are going to be your allies and work with them, and definitely don't pass up the help, even though they might not look like you. The fourth one is intellectual property. It's innovative content that is the result of self-determined creativity to which one has rights for and for which one deserves both credit and compensation. That means that you need to give props where props are due and also that you don't bite or plagiarize other people's stuff. Meaning, if it's not your idea, don't pretend like it is and make sure you shine the light on those who are brilliant in your midst no matter what. And finally, the final one, please tell everybody that Free Egg Femi told you that you can and that you will, and that is the end of the story. Finally, at the end of every talk that I give, I do this thing and I want y'all to do it with me. Right hands up, fist in the air, in honor of the self-determined and the social innovators of Richmond, Virginia, power to the people, may it be so. Now say, may it be so. May, may it be so. Give thanks. <laughs>